If you're showing off this on your shoulder, then you want to show off that nice thigh muscle as well. So if you bring this down and leave that up on, on any breed that you're doing, the dog is not really going to look like it's all the same dog. You know, does that make sense? It's going to look out of balance. So you always want to make sure that you have balance. I always think about what I'm doing with the head has to go with what I'm doing with the tail. You know, so you want to always try to bring the dog together. And when something is balanced, when you look at it, your eye is like almost drawn to the center. You know, your tuck up, your top line, your neckline, everything kind of meets in the middle. So if your eye is drawn to one end more than the other, then something's not right, something's out of balance. So by coming down and taking that, that hip off, you're gonna actually show more of that fine line to match with what we've done in the front of the dog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you want to be careful with old English, especially your pet dogs, because if you look at their shape when you have them in the bathtub, most of your pets, just from the way they're bred and because they're such a big dog, are really out of balance as far as their structure goes. You know, they may have elbows that turn out, or they may be cow hocked in the back. So what we can do with this hair is we can create a lot of the illusions that these dogs are more balanced in their conformations. So that's why on him, I'm going to leave his legs a little bit fuller and do his body tight, and I think that'll help balance him up, balance him out because he's such a big dog anyway. Um, I think, what's that? Yeah, yeah, so the more hair you leave on him, the more out of, out of balance he's going to look as far as the structure of him, so we're trying to just disguise all these faults. I actually love doing this breed where I didn't used to, and I think it was because there were every six month matted mess. Oh my god, we used to find like kids toys. One time I found a needle and thread, um, a lady's hair roller, curlers, you know, the curly hair. It was like all matted into the dog. And the very worst time I ever did in Old English, she came in and they had said to me she was a three-legged dog. So she was missing one of her front legs. So the girl that works for me started clipping the dog and she got to the shoulder and she was like, so what the heck is this? It wasn't actually missing the leg. The leg was there and it had atrophied and matted up into the dog's coat. Mm -hmm. So the whole leg was actually there. It was really disgusting. But now I, I think that they've, the breeders have worked a lot on this, these dogs' temperaments and I, I just love them. I get, a, I get a kick out of them. Some of them are my favorite ones to do. Okay, so what I'm going to switch to now is the E comb or the one inch comb. And what I want to do, because I did, a, I did his body short, and actually, if you put your hands on this dog, this is all dog. There's not a lot of hair right there at this point. And so, because his body, because he's got so much substance to his body, I definitely want, don't want to take away from the body by making these legs pinch. So, if he has a coat like this, and, and the people bring him in often enough, you can keep this type of coat up without taking it too short. But if we took it short, or say we used the three quarter inch snap on comb like we did on the body, what's gonna happen is he's gonna have this really thick, really, um, you know, a lot of substance to his body, and then he's gonna have these little skinny pin legs. And what we're trying to do as pet groomers, um, not really going with breed standard on this particular breed, but what we're trying to do as pet groomers is trying to make him look balanced. So I'm gonna switch to the one comb, and then I'm gonna follow my clipper work that we set in here, and I'm just gonna follow this down. What you'll see, um, especially on him because he's cow hocked in the back, so which means he's out further at the top and then his legs go in right as he, right as he get down close to the hop. So what I'm going to do is I want to leave hair in this area to balance it out. So I'm going to have to take a little bit more off. I'm going to skim a little bit more off the top of this, this leg and I'm going to leave the hair in the middle and then we'll fill it in just by leaving that in the middle. And that should help balance out his legs. But basically what I'm doing is I'm just skimming. I'm not, I'm not actually taking the, the comb all the way down to the skin. So I'm just skimming this straight down. So as I come off this hip, once I feel where there, there's an indentation, just like on the front, I'm just going to skim it straight down. I'm pretending there's hair in this area to fill it in. One thing I don't like about our limiters is they do this. 
There's a whole room, and so as you're trying to sizzle the feet, they're doing feet back and forth. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing on the back, and I'm gonna leave, I'll leave this area here because we're, we'll do the feet last. So I'm gonna move around to the front because we're trying to keep everything in balance. We're just gonna comb everything. And you'll notice I'm combing everything out. I'm not combing it straight up. I'm just kind of pulling it out away from the skin. Then when I go to flip it, it's standing up enough that my flipper can get into it. I'm going to come in right at the shoulder. And I'm just going to skim this off straight down the side of the leg. So this you really wind up taking the style away from the dog. And that's what we want as our calling card. You see this dog walking around. You know, people ask you who runs it, then of course you want them to say your name and you want the people to, to come to you and use you. My favorite is when people will see a dog like in a dog park or something like that and they'll go up and ask and they recognize the haircut that came from my shop. Then you know you're doing something right and people actually will say, well, I bet you get groomed and get with that. Well, one thing with this breed though, if, if they do come in when they're, when they're really, really mad at, when you feel those ears on those dogs in there, those really thick mats, make sure that you do all of this on your check-in when the dog comes in. If he's got tight mats everywhere, um, like I know Barkley has a lot of those release forms and I think it's a really good idea to have them sign something, read something over, but go over with them. When you shave those mats off the ears, now you figure how long it's taken for those ears to get that heavy and that matted. When you take that off, the dog, you know, I mean, that feels really different. So what do they do? They start shaking their head. And from flapping their ears back and forth, it like breaks the blood vessels in the tip of the ears and they end up with hematomas. And then they go to the vet two, three days later, four days later or whatever, and they send you the bill. That's not your fault. You did not cause that hematoma. It was their neglect that caused it. So if you let the people know when they come in in the morning, there's a good chance this is going to happen because it's been so long because this ear is in such throw it all back on them. You can do it in a nice way, but let them know that they're responsible for that hematoma, not you. Um, and I know those, those hoodie things, they're like a soft band that goes over the head. If you do have a dog that comes in that has those really heavy matted ears, if you put one of those on, at least if he shakes his head, it's not going to be flapping his ears back and forth, and that might help to save, you know, from, from getting the hematoma. So, but that's just something, you know, like old, really old animals, dogs that come in in really, really bad shape, cats, um, you know, anything, anything like that that down the road you're going to end up responsible for. You know, get those Barclay forms and have them sign those, and that's going to cover you. Now, I'm going to switch to this is a 21 tooth blender. So, this is the blending shear that there's more space in the teeth and they're a little bit wider. But when you have a dog where you're trying to make a nice transition from your snap on comb work, and this works great on your sheet fuse, glasses, um, carriers, whatever it may be, if you'll take these blending shears and you, you, you don't use them like a thinning shear, so I'm not actually pulling through the coat but I'm using, using them more like a scissor. So and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna follow my clipper line. It would be still. And I'm gonna follow my clipper line right into the underline. And this, this will help blend everything in. So when he moves, you won't have all this hair flapping in the wind. Yeah, great. Uh, perfect. So, and another thing, if we're trying to make a dog look natural like this, I hate to see when you when you are working on an under, underline, somebody take a pair of straight or a pair of curved shears and make this really straight line underneath. So, if we want to keep everything natural, I'm going to use either a thinning shear or I'm going to use a blending shear, and I'm going to do my underline with that particular tool because that will take length off and it will make it appear natural instead of like it's been trimmed. So. It'll just give you a little bit softer finish. It won't be nearly as extreme. But you have to be careful. You don't want to take too much hair off this underline. Um, because like I said earlier, it's going to make his legs look long and then he's going to look out of balance. I will make a 
where his tuck up should be. So right behind the last rib, I'll take this a little bit tighter and then I'll fill the hair in in this area. Here, I'm just making the shape. That way when I set the dog's foot back down on the table, I can see how much I've actually left and then I can trim it up from this point to make it the right length. So I'll pick it up and comb everything down. So I'm gonna lay my curved shear right down to this pad. So I'm gonna lay this part of my blade all the way down on the pad and I'm gonna make one cut straight across that pad. And so what that's going to do is when I put his foot back down, he's going to look more like he's up on his toes. He's not going to look like he's sitting down on the back of his feet. So then I'll take my curves and I'll lay it on the pad closest to the outside of the foot. And I'll cut that straight across. And you'll notice I'm not getting into the side of the foot. I'm just getting the hair on the bottom. So, okay, buddy. So same thing on the inside of the foot. Cut it there. And then I'm just going to make shape, just a nice curved shape around the foot from this angle, and I'm going to set it back down, and now I'll do my finish work on my foot. So I've got some of the length set in, or some of my shape set in, but I know the underside of my foot is nice and neat. So now I'll come in with my curves at an angle from the hop, and I'll go right down, right around the side of the foot into the front. And I usually pull the dog to the edge of the table. You can see if you pull him to the edge of the table, the table's not going to get in your way when you're cutting around the foot. So I can get around the foot pretty easy from this angle. And we're going to have these nice big round feet, which are going to be in balance with the rest of the dog's leg. And once I get the outside of my foot done, I'll comb down. I know you can't see this, but I'll comb down the inside of my foot. In the same angle I'll use on the inside of the foot. And then once my foot is set in, my shape is set in, I'm going to pick it up just so we know everything's nice and neat. And just look at it with it off the table and I'll just take the ends off. And if you have these edges where they look really sharp or really extreme, then you can take your blender once again or your thinning shear and just take the edges off. You follow the same shape as your curved shear, take the edges off, and that will soften it up with your blending shear. Alright, so the shape of my front foot, I want to have similar shape on the back foot, or I want to have the same shape back to it. And also I'd like for them to be in balance with each other. So I don't want my front feet smaller than the back feet. Like on some reads the standard calls for that. But on him, I want to make sure his front foot is balanced out with his back foot and his front leg. So same back. It'll be a lot neater. So I'm just going to trim around the bottom of the foot the hair that would be touching the table. And then I'm going to cut my cute expression. So a curved shear right around the back of the foot. And if you'll notice my curves are out at an angle, so what, what that does is it creates a bevel shape as you're going around the foot. Just gives them a little bit more style. If you do your feet too tight from the bottom, once you turn your foot over, your feet are not going to balance out with the rest of your dog's leg. If you don't have a good pair of curved shears, I know a lot of schools will teach you to, to do everything with straights when you're first learning because they think it's easier. But once you get out of school, get your own place, it's always good to have a good pair of curved shears because you can take a lot less strokes with the scissor with a curved shear working on a, a round section than you will with a straight shear. So, it's always good to have a good pair of curves.
All right, so once I get my front foot, um, so I'm constantly looking from, my, from front to back because I want my front foot the same shape. So I'm looking, I can kind of see from this angle what I have to work with. So now what I'm gonna do is fluff it up and look at my lines coming down from my shoulder all the way to the side of my foot. Anything hanging off, I'm gonna take my thinners or my blending shears and just blend this in. And you've got to be careful too with this breed. If you're going to try to shorten them up, you can take more hair off the front of the back leg, but you don't want to take this hair off the, the front of the, I mean the back of the front leg, because that will make them look really long in body. So, and usually they have some cow licks right here from the elbow, right down to about midway down the front leg. So you've got to be real careful in that area. So I'm always using a thinner or a blender in that area. So now the chest that we left, we left sort of this bib in this area. So now I want to make sure I have a nice transition from my chest into my shoulder. So I'm going to use my blender and cut right into the front of this leg. And then I'm just going to take my blender straight across and just smooth everything out. So when he does move, he, he's going to have a bib, he's going to have some fill in this area, but it's not going to be too much where it throws your eye or draws your eye towards the front of his chest. I have so much drool down my arm. It's like <laughs> <laughs> it is running all on my sleeve. It's okay, buddy. That's one thing I can't stand too. You know, when dogs drool, I don't know what it is. What it is. It's just like a ugh. Right? Yes. <laughs> Well, this kind of drool isn't like like a lunga kind of a drool. Like, yeah, like slime. Yeah, when they, when they shake and it lands on your face and you have to pick it off. <laughs> At least you can just pick that off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the life of a dog with a monkey. Oh, no, I love the so, Okay, so now the, the front of the back leg, I want to create the same angle that we have on the back of the leg. I want to create that on the front of the leg. So, but you've got to be careful. If you take too much off this area, you wind up losing the knee. So I'll just fluff everything, comb everything forward, and I'm just going to follow that shape with my thinners. If you do this with a strain or a curve, what's going to happen is as you cut, it's going to make it look really extreme, and we want this to look soft. So I'm going to do this with either a blending shear or a thinning shear just to keep that natural look. But you've got to be real careful. You don't want to take this knee out because they usually pattern out in the front of this leg. They usually don't have much hair in that area anyway. So I'm just taking off the edges, basically. I'm, I'm trying to leave the length and the volume, but I'm just taking off the edges at this point. So same thing on the back. I just want to make sure as I comb this, and you can give it a little bit of shape, but you definitely, you don't want to trim, you don't want to comb up and trim, it's only it will not look right when you're finished, but I want to make sure this hock is trimmed up nice, they usually run a lot of this hock hair off, so they usually don't have a lot back here, but I do want to neaten it up. And then on the inside of the back leg, one way to do the inside of these back legs is because it is a drop coat, um, you can just hold the leg sort of out to the side. You don't want to pull it up high, but you can just hold it out to the side, pump everything down, and then take your shear right from the side of the foot, right up into the underside of the private area here. And just by taking that length off from this angle, Once you set it back down, everything should fall into place. So then you, you should have these nice lines. So you should have a nice parallel line from the inside to the outside of the leg. Y'all do a lot of old English? Really? I don't. 
I used to do a lot of them, but um, all of a sudden I got a whole bunch of them. Yeah. I got like 12 of them. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. I have too many. <laughs> <laughs> they, they honestly break out when you work on them because they're so, you know, you pick up a leg and they want to put all their weight into that leg, it seems like. They're not really real, like, helpful. Right, exactly. <laughs> but the good thing about it is, you know, if the people want a nice personality trim and they don't want all the hair, you can take this, the same thing that we're doing here and just modify it. Even if you know the people want a short blade on the back, um, because most of the people that get this read, they want it to look like an old English, but they don't want to keep up all the hair, so that you kind of have to find that happy medium. The way that taught me ten years ago had to leave a few butts. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, well, well, that's I the thing. Less to take the butts off. Yeah. <laughs> when they, <laughs> well, when they see them in the showroom, they've got all that, and it's scissored down. All that's sprayed up, and it's got product in it, and you can't do that with a pet dog that's at home because they'd be a matted mess when they came yeah. back. So even if we took this and, and we tried to spray it up and just, you know, say they wanted to look like that, they were having a party or something, you spray it up, um, you put some product in it, and you can get that look. But once it relaxes or, you know, that, that product stays in there for a few days, it's going to be a matted mess. So I don't really recommend putting that in. It's like, one of the years have been shaved or it doesn't seem to have any ear problems. But if you can talk your old English clients into to doing the shorter ears, it's always great because they do. They usually carry a lot of fungus and you know a lot of moisture in the ears just because of the way the ears lay. So what I'm going to do with him is I'm not going to shave him, but I'm definitely going to keep the same shape, and shorten him up. But here's the key. So we put all this work into. You know, into doing the snap-on combs and trying to make everything look natural. So, with these guys, if you take a, a straight or a curved shear, I'm just going to show you this for example. You see when I cut, you see how every time I cut it makes a separation in the coat and you can see like definition. So, what, what happens is when you wind up putting it down, you can see all of this because it is a drop coated, you know, it does act like a drop coated. Um, ear, so you can start to see all this separation and you can't ever get it smooth and then what happens is you wind up having these real sharp lines so instead of doing that around this head you can take some length off with your with your straighter or curved shear but you always want to go back with your thinner or your blender and take this off just to soften it up Shih Tzu, Lhasa ears, they're bad about this. If you, if you take a straight or a curve on a Shih Tzu, Lhasa, Yorkie, Maltese, whatever it may be, they, uh, they wind up looking really out of balance and it's hard to get them, it's hard to get them straight. Especially, you know, when the people want just a little bit of length taken off your Shih Tzu ears and you hold it up, well, first of all, a lot of times people just cut it across and then what happens is once you let the ear back down, let it relax, there's like this chunk of hair that sticks out like right behind the ear. So what I do if I have the longer ears, I'll usually hold the ear out at this angle and I'll come in right from the side of the head and I'll trim this up from this angle and then I'll lay it down to make sure there's nothing hanging off and then I'll trim the rest of my ear. So because it's always that spot on the back of the ear that gives you trouble. Is this your dog? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I just we had no instructions, so I thought, well, maybe it's her dog. She wants so. to stop now. <laughs> now I'd love to worry. I was going to ask if I could cut the ears off. That's what I was going to ask if it was yours. So, sure. But, <laughs> <laughs> but if you get the, like your, your Shih Tzu loss of drop coat of breeds like this, that do, you know, usually as their ears grow out, they get real scraggly and they don't have a lot of texture to them anyway. If you can talk the people into doing, you know, just a little, uh, heart shaped ear or just follow the structure as long as the ears lay down towards the side of the head you can make them look really cute so that's what I like to do with these guys so now what I'm going to do on his head so now what I'm going to do with his head is we want to leave his head a little bit full just because he is a large breed I hate to see um, the large breeds where they take their head so short that they wind up looking really out of balance with the body. So what I'm going to do with him is I'm going to part the hair right down the center of the head because it's long 
If you were to take a snap on comb and go straight back, what it's gonna do is gonna make this almost like a mohawk strip through here where it's too short. So anytime you have the, the hair that's grown out a little bit longer, if you'll part it down the middle, then you'll take, I'm gonna take a little longer, the number one or the E snap on comb. And basically I'm just taking some length off at this point. So find your point, find the, uh, the center of your part, and go from the center of your part right over the ear this way. Stop. That way you're not coming from front to back and cutting all that hair off. So if you'll find the center, just skim it off from side to side. This works great on sheep use. Maltese, anything where the hair just kind of naturally parts. So skim it from side to side. Then we're going to go a little bit tighter over the ears just to kind of blend the ears in. So I'm going right down to the top of the ear leather. Here. And I'm just going to skim off the top of this neck just to take some length off. Because we left that to fill in so he doesn't look so long in body. Now what I'm going to do is you'll comb everything down and because we've cut it with the part, it should be pretty even, um, but I want to create some volume to this head. I want to create some volume on his head, that's why I did a little bit longer snap on comb. So now what I want to do, I'm going to make like a little visor like we would do with some of the small things. But the key is, you don't want to take a straight or a curve. If you take a curved shear and you try to do a visor, whether it be this breed or Shih Tzu, Lhasa, Maltese, whatever it may be, as you put this shear in the coat and you close this shear, it pushes the hair towards the center of the nose. And so what happens is you wind up having like one separation here and then it will be a separation between the first cut you made and the second cut. So you can't ever get a good even finish on it. So if you'll take your thinners or your blenders and you'll start. What is that? <laughs> is that a dog? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Somebody's either really hungry or there's a dog in here. <laughs> so I'm holding the head down. I'm going from the corner of the eye. You can just be still for five minutes, that would be perfect. So, and I'm just taking this straight across. So what this is going to do by using the thinner is once he shakes, it's going to open up the eye, or open up his expression where you're Take it right, this right into the corner. Groomers don't like when you have a really perfect dog in a demo. Well, hey. It's realistic. It's not realistic. So you're doing really well, Joe. Try holding on to a wet fish <laughs> with slime all down your hand. That's a challenge. <laughs> so I'm going right up into the stop, just from one corner to the next. He's got really, really, you see his big, he's almost like, he's really red. I don't know if that's stress. Yeah. Okay. Is that okay, buddy? Is he in there? He's actually leaving my hand spots on the table. Oh, really? Oh, uh -huh. okay, go ahead. Okay, so I go in, and I never take my um, clipper in this area, so I'll take the finish shears, go right up into the stop. Okay. And then I want to leave a little bit of an overhang here. I don't want it so short where it looks like he's kind of a. 
really stark expression. So I'm just going to try to keep that as soft as I can. Just right underneath the eye, I'm going to take my curves and just kind of whittle that out so I can see his eyes. He's not tolerating the thin shoes as much as I like. So that way, he kind of has this overhang. Which if you cut that off, you'll go blind. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we'll call it, That's what they used to tell me when I first started. And again, it was those once a year dogs. And I think it's because they had all this hair matted over their eyes, and then you cut that away, and the bright light irritates their eyes. It's not that they're going to go blind. <laughs> they started going to breed shows and seeing that in between showing, they put ponytails and keep the hair up out of the dog's eyes. So they actually prefer to be able to see. Right. How do you handle once a year dogs in your salon? Oh, ask me that question. <laughs> <laughs>